Hello friends, I'm Neha from iExamB. I welcome you all. Friends, do subscribe to our channel and press on the bell icon so that you can get notifications with respect to the upcoming government exams. For any queries, you can contact us on the email ID which is displayed on the screen or you can call us on the number or you can visit our website for more details. Friends, I'd like to inform you that we at Exam B, we are providing an exclusive online course for the IBPS SO Law Officer Examination and the new batch for this course is going to start from 8th of November 2021. So friends, you can get yourself enrolled for this exclusive online course which provides you regular guidance, exclusive mock tests, personalized study plans performance monitoring by the expert faculties and one-on-one -on -one session with the faculty. Apart from these features which are there in the exclusive online course, we also provide video lessons, study notes for exam preparation which are exam oriented, practice tests which includes mock tests, chapter tests etc which provides you ample of practice before exams. Live sessions are being conducted by our expert faculty wherein you can clarify all your doubts and interview is also being conducted by the expert interview. And friends you can get yourself enrolled in this new batch which is going to start from 8th of November and for that you can Call us on this number or you can visit our website. Please do avail this opportunity of getting yourself prepared under the able guidance of the expert faculties. As we know that the IBPS SO Law Officer examination are going to be conducted very soon. So with respect to this exam, I'll be discussing about the insolvency and bankruptcy code. And under that, I'll be discussing about the initiation of the corporate insolvency resolution process. Friends, if you have missed the introduction to this uh, topic that is Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, so you can go through that video, uh, the link for which is provided in the description of this video. So you can, section 6 of the code that provides that who are all those category of people who can initiate the corporate insolvency resolution process that is CIRP and the uh, According to this section, the financial creditors, the operational creditors and the corporate applicant or the corporate debtor, these are the category of people who can initiate corporate insolvency resolution process. Now the question which comes is who are the financial creditors? So financial creditors are basically the lenders who provide the credit facility or loan and their relationship with the corporate or the entity that is pure, that is purely financial contract. While the operational creditors, they they are the ones who whose liability actually from the entity that comes from the transactions on the operations, like uh, the goods or the services uh, which they provide and the payment for the same that is due from the corporate debtor or the entities. And if we talk about the corporate applicant, then the corporate applicant that has been defined under section 5 subsection 5 of the code and according to which uh, the corporate applicant that includes the corporate debtor, the members of partners of the corporate debt who has been actually authorized or the persons uh, who have the control and supervision of the financial affairs of the corporate debtor etc and the corporate debtor that is a person who owes any debt to any person. Initiation of the CIRP by the financial creditor. So the financial creditor uh, can either individually or jointly file an application uh, for initiating the corporate insolvency resolution process in case uh, there is any default which is committed by the corporate debtor and the application that is required to be filed with the adjudicating authority and the adjudicating authority once it receives the application then within 14 days it has to ascertain the very existence of the default which it can do either from the records of the information utility or the other evidences which are being furnished by the financial creditor. Next, the adjudicating authority can either accept the application or it can reject the application. So it will be accepting the application if the default that has occurred, the application is complete or there are no disciplinary proceedings against the proposed resolution professional, etc. So on this basis, the application can be accepted by the adjudicating authority. Adjudicating authority that can reject the application if default uh, that has not occurred or the application is incomplete or 
all the disciplinary proceedings are pending against the proposed resolution professional etc uh, but the adjudicating authority that will be uh, allowing uh, seven days uh, to rectify the mistakes after this the corporate insolvency resolution process that will be commencing from the very date of admission of the application initiation of the corporate insolvency resolution process by the operational creditor now the operational creditor is the second category of uh, people who can initiate the cirp so or uh, if a default that has uh, uh, occurred then the operational creditor it can deliver a demand notice of the unpaid operational debt or copy of an invoice uh, for the purpose of demanding payment of the default amount and after the expiry of 10 days if the or if the operational creditor a, does not receive the payment or the notice of dispute, then he can file an application before the authority for the purpose of initiating CIRP. The operational creditor, along with the application, he'll be furnishing certain documents like the copy of invoice bill demanding the payment or demand notice affidavit uh, that there is no notice being given by the corporate debtor that is relating to the dispute of the unpaid operational debt etc and after that the adjudicating authority after receiving the application uh, within 14 days will either accept the application or reject the application acceptance of the application will be the application is complete the, there is no payment of unpaid operational debt uh, then invoice or payment uh, or notice for the payment to the corporate debtor that has been delivered etc and it can reject the application if it is incomplete there has been payment of unpaid operational debt etc however it will again be aligned uh, like it did in the financial creditor uh, in the same way the adjudicating authority will be aligned the applicant seven day time for rectifying the mistakes if any and after that the corporate insolvency resolution process will be commencing from the very date of admission of the application initiation of the cirp by the corporate debtor so the corporate debtor uh, on committing a default can file an application for initiating the cirp with the adjudicating authority and the corporate debtor will be uh, furnishing uh, certain information along with the application with respect to the books of accounts or other documents resolution professional being proposed uh, by it for appointment as interim resolution professional etc and the adjudicating authority it will be accepting the application if it is complete or no disciplinary proceedings are pending against the resolution professional or it will reject the application if the uh, application is income complete or disciplinary proceedings are pending against the proposed resolution professional etc however again in this case also it will be aligned the applicant seven days time for the purpose of rectifying the mistakes and after this the cirp will be commencing to inform you that the live sessions at exam B that are going to start from 8th of november uh, you can find the schedule for that so in the month of november approximately we'll be conducting 16 lectures with respect to the acts which you can see on the screen so uh, a certain number of dedicated lectures are being given for each and every act based on the priority uh, for the exam so this is for the month of november in the month of december we will be having approximately 18 lectures in which we'll be covering different acts or subjects and lastly in the month of january also we will be having uh, 17 lectures and we'll be covering the rest of the acts till the mid of uh, the month of january so friends you can avail this opportunity of joining our exclusive online course for the ibps so law office or exam preparation under the april guidance of our expert legal faculties so do avail this opportunity and contact us for getting yourself enrolled friends do not forget to subscribe to our channel